In this video, we're going to dive into more advanced concepts in the Django Sesame package that we looked at in the last video. Now, in the last video, we saw how we can log in users with a magic link. So for example, we email a user a link and then they go to that link and they're automatically logged into the application. And we also saw in the last video how we can authenticate individual Django views using the Authenticate Decorator. So instead of logging users in, you can actually send a link to people who you want to access a particular page in your application, they can then go to that page with the URL, but they can't access other protected URLs in your application. So instead of logging people in, it gives them access to individual views. Now in this video, we're gonna go deeper and we're gonna see an advanced use case. We're gonna look at scoped URLs, and that allows you to expose particular parts of your application to certain people, but keep other things protected. So we're gonna see how that works now. Let's dive in and we're gonna continue from where we left off in the last video. Now in the last video, in the views.py file, we ended with these two secret URLs that had the authenticate decorator. We're now going to look at scoped tokens. So let's go back to this user guide on the documentation. At the right hand side, we have a scoped token section. Let's click that and you'll scroll down. So what this means is if your application uses tokens for multiple purposes, then what you should do is you should not create a single token for all users, even though they might require different parts of your application. Instead of that, you should scope tokens to particular views in your app. The example they give here, if you're generating a token for giving access to a report with the ID of 66, then you can set the tokens scope to that particular string here, report 66. So let's imagine that in our application, where we have a user object, we want users to be able to share a profile page with other users. Now that should be scoped to a particular ID for the given user who's sharing the profile. So we can use scoped tokens for that purpose. Now what we're gonna do now is add a URL to our URL patterns. At the bottom here, I'll paste that in. And the URL is to profile slash primary key. Now the primary key is a dynamic URL variable and it's associated with a given user. And that will then load up a view called user profile. So we need to define that view in our views.py file. So let's go to the bottom of that file. And for quickness here, I'm gonna paste this in. It's a very simple view. It calls the get object or 404 function. And we're getting the user by the primary key in the URL. Now remember when you add a dynamic URL parameter in Django, that is available to you in the view as an argument, as you can see here. We then fetch the user by that primary key. And when we get the user, we attach it to the context and we're returning a profile.html template. Now to make this work, we need to import get object or 404. So let's scroll to the top and that comes from the Django.shortcuts module. So let's paste that in there. And now what we need to do, if we go back down here, we need to create a template for the profile. So let's create a new template and it's gonna be profile.html. I'm gonna paste this code in here. Again, this extends the base template and it provides a content block that has the user's username as well as a link back to the home page. So this is a very simple user profile page. We're gonna work with this in order to create scoped tokens. Now we have the Django server running, so we're gonna to go to the page and the URL here is gonna be slash profile slash one. As you can see, that takes us to the admin users page. Admin is the username of this given user and that is in the template as you can see here, user.username. Now, what we're gonna do now is create another couple of users in this application. So let's stop the Django development server and we're gonna run the create super user command. And I'm gonna create a user called admin2. That's gonna be admin2 at test.com. And we'll create another super user and that's gonna be admin3. And they'll have an email address of admin3 at test.com. So now we have three super users in our application. Now what we want to do is we want to protect the access to this user profile view. We don't want this freely available to anyone on the internet. We want to protect it to only logged in users or users that have a valid token in the URL. So for that, we're going to use scoped tokens. Let's go back to the documentation. This is the scoped token section and this will be linked below the video. Now in the previous video, we saw this function called getQueryString that generates a query string with a valid token for a given user. Now Django Sesame has another two functions for creating tokens. There's a getParameters function and also a getToken function. Now all of these accept a scope argument and that scope argument can be set to a string which defines the scope of the token. And as you can see below, the login view and the authenticate decorator, as well as the get user function from Sesame, these accept the same scope argument to authenticate scope tokens. So what that means is when you create a token with a given scope, if you then pass that same scope to these authentication methods, 
it means that the token is only valid for those views that have that particular scope. Now what we're going to do is, as you can see below, you can pass a scope to the Authenticate Decorator. Now for us, the scope is going to be a single user's profile page. So we're going to pass a scope of user and then we're going to reference their ID or their primary key in the database. Now we need to change the views.py file and within this function here, the index function, this is the function that handles the submission of the email form. What we're going to do now is generate a link that's scoped to a particular user's profile page. And that user, I'm just going to get the first user from the database. So we're going to say user.objects.first. Now what we want Django Sesame to do is to generate a URL that is scoped to this user's profile page. So the link that we're building here, we're going to have to change that. We're going to change it from secret report to the user profile. And the user profile, this is a named URL in the URL patterns. It's the one we've just built. But as you can see, this URL has a primary key. That's a dynamic part of the URL. So we're going to need to reference that when we call the reverse function. So what we're going to do is pass keyword arguments to that and it's going to be the primary key and that refers to the name that's set here in this URL. And we're going to set that equal to this first user's primary key. So we'll say first user dot PK. So we're reversing the user profile URL and we're injecting the primary key of that first user into that URL. So we're going to email this link to our users when they fill in the email form and that's going to allow them to access that given user's profile page. Now one other thing we need to do here is we need to actually set the scope and we do that by passing a scope keyword argument to this get query string function. So let's do that now. We're going to set a scope. I'm going to use an F string here and we're going to scope this to the user and then we'll reference the first user's primary key. So for example, if the user's primary key is one, the scope is going to be user colon one. And when we authenticate in the user profile view down below, we're going to pass that same scope to the view. And we'll see that in just a second. As far as this goes, that's all we need to do. Let's recap what we're doing. So when a user fills the email form in, what we're now doing is we are generating a link and that link is tied to the first user in the database. We're going to share that first user's profile page and when we call the get query string function to generate the token, we're setting that scope and we're setting it to the first user's primary key. So what we need to do now is actually protect the user profile view and we're going to use that authenticate decorator again. So we'll say authenticate. Now we're going to pass a scope to the authenticate decorator and we're going to set that equal to user and then a dynamic primary key. So for example, one, and this will be replaced by whatever number is specified in the URL. So let's go to the browser and we have this URL here. It's profile slash one. Let's execute that and we can see that we have this forbidden. That's because we don't have a token in the URL that will allow us access to this page. So what we're going to do now is go back to the normal page. We're going to fill in an email. That's going to hit this view in our views.py file that we've just filled out up here. That's going to generate a link for us that's scoped to that user's profile. It's going to email that out to us and then hopefully when we go back to the browser with the token, we're going to be able to access this page. So let's fill out our user. It's admin at test.com. We'll send that login link and then if we inspect the terminal on our VS code, we have this link here and you can see it's got profile slash one in it and that's coming from reversing the user profile. But this time we have our token at the end of the URL. So let's copy that and we'll go back to the browser. If we paste that in, we now get access to the admin user's profile page using that scoped token. Now we've emailed this link to the same user whose profile page this is because the user that we've emailed it to is the same user that has the ID of one. Remember the email is coming from the form.clean data. We fetch a user by that email address and then it's that user we email. So we've emailed the same user a magic link to the profile page. Let's actually email another user that link to demonstrate that this works with any user who has a valid token. If we go back to the home page, we're going to fill this in admin at test.com. We're actually going to say admin2 at test.com. That's one of the other users we created. When we send that email, if we go back to the terminal, we now have another URL here. Let's copy that and go back to the page. And when we execute this, again, we're taken to the admin user's profile page. So even though that email was sent to another user who's not 
the same user who owns this profile page. That other user is able to access it because they have the correct scoped token. Now the key point is that this is a scoped token. It only works with the first user in the database. So if we change the profile to two here, that link will no longer work because the scope that has been set when we actually call the get query string function here. It does not match the primary key that's coming through in the URL, so it will have a different scope. So if we try and visit this URL, we're gonna get a 403 forbidden. We're not allowed to access it, but that works with the profile of one. And that's because we don't have a scope with user colon two, it was user colon one. So that's a scoped URL. If we go back to the views.py file, let's recap what we've done. We've got the first user from the database and that happens to have the primary key or the ID of one. We're then building an absolute URI for that user profile URL and we're attaching the primary key in the URL. And once we have that, we append the result of calling get query string and attaching that scope to that. That will give the given user who's filled the email form access to the profile page that has been shared. Now we are hard coding which profile page we can access, but you can imagine this being used dynamically on a website. You click a button that says share profile and you can then share it with a given set of users. And the important note is that if you have a token that has been scoped like this, you cannot simply go to another user's profile page and view that because the scope will not match. So that's better security because if you want to share your profile with somebody, you want to make sure that that token that you're giving that user is only accessible for your profile and it doesn't give your users access to every profile on the site. So it's a scoped token and that's much better for security than simply generating a site-wide token. Now what we're doing at the moment is we're setting a scope for the user profile endpoint, but you can actually share a scope between different endpoints as well. So if we were sharing the secret view and the secret report view together and we want users with the correct token to be able to access both of these but not the user profile we can actually create a scope for these two views as well so let's say we now want to generate a URL for the secret view and the token in that URL can also be used within the secret report view so what we're going to do is we're going to go back up and change this view here at the top when a user submits their email address we're going to generate a token for this URL here it's the secret URL so we're going to copy and paste that into the reverse function and this time we're going to change the scope that's generated here and we're going to set that equal to a secret scope. We don't need to attach any primary keys to this. We're just going to name it secret. Now it's worth knowing that if you don't pass a scope here in this function, there is a default scope that's created by Django Sesame. So we're overwriting that and we're setting the secret scope here. And what we're going to do now is we're going to set that scope here on both of these views. So I'm going to say scope equals secret and we'll copy that down to the other Authenticate Decorator. And now both of these two views have the same scope, it's the secret scope. So when we get a URL with a token that has that scope, we can then use that token to access both of these views, but we can't use it to access this view here because that has a different scope. So if we save that file and go back to our web page, we're going to go to the home page and we'll fill this in with the admin at test.com user. Then when we go to the terminal, we've got the email, we can grab the link that has been sent and we can paste that in and you can see that we can then get access to the secret page. But because we have the same scope here in the secret report view, we can actually go to that URL as well and we should be able to access that too. So I'm going to paste that into the URL and when we hit enter here, we're also taken to the secret report page because the token is valid valid for both of these pages. So that's scope tokens. We're going to amend that now and we're going to give users who don't have a user account in our database the ability to access these pages using authenticated links. Now I'm going to do this quickly. We're going to change up quite a few things in the views.py file and particularly in this index view. We are no longer going to try and fetch a user by the email address that's been entered because the whole idea here is that we want to be able to send a link to users who don't have an account in our database. So therefore this particular statement would return none. So we're going to get rid of all of this code here. Now what we're going to do is generate a scoped token to the first user's profile page. And we're going to send that to people who are not part of our system necessarily and who can then use the link to actually access the first user's page. So we're going to go back to the same setup we had before. The link is going to be going to the user profile page. And as before, we attach the primary key as a keyword argument to the reverse function. And to the get query string function, we're going to change the scope. And again, we're going to reference this dynamic primary key based scope. 
And in a second, we're gonna change the user that this is applied to. And now what we're gonna do is instead of this user that had filled the email form in and had been found in our database, we're gonna replace that with the first user whose profile page we're validating. So we're giving access to a user's profile page. We know that user's in the database, so we're gonna use that instead. And it's very important that we scope this to a particular primary key. Otherwise, we're potentially gonna give anyone with this URL access to our entire site. And even worse, if we're using the login view that we've seen in the previous video, then we're potentially gonna log people in who have this URL as this user, so we don't want to do that. And the final thing we need to do here is we need to change the way the emails are sent. Previously, we were using the email user function on a user model in Django. We can't do that anymore because there's no guarantee that the person who's filled in the email address has a user account. So what we're going to do is remove this and we're going to bring a couple of imports in at the top here. We're going to import from Django.conf the settings and we're also going to import the send mail function from the mail module. So the send mail function we can use to directly send an email to a given email address. So we're going to use that now. Now the first argument is going to be the subject. We'll just say profile link for this. The second argument is going to be the actual content, the message, and we're going to say view with this link and we're going to attach the link that we've generated above to the email. And we need to set a few other things here. We're going to say the settings.default from email. That's going to be who's actually sending this. So Django has a default from email setting. And the fourth argument is the list of people who should receive this email. So we're just going to attach the email address that we got from the form.cleaned data on line 18. And that's the only email address we need to send this to. We don't need to attach any others. And finally, we're going to say fail silently equals false. So if there's any problem sending this email, we don't want to just fail silently and not send it. We want to raise the issue. So let's try this out. If we go back to the page, we're going to go to the home page and we're going to attach a random email. And this email address does not have an account in our database. If we send the login link and go to the terminal here, we can then copy that link and then we can go to the URL, paste it in there and we can follow that through to the admin users page. So now we're able to give the links to people who don't have accounts in our database and we're sending them a URL that's scoped to a particular user's profile page and that works without them having to create an account. So that's quite nice and that can be useful if you want to create a website where you want to expose things and you don't require people to have accounts. Now to close up this video, I want to discuss very quickly a couple of settings that Django Sesame offers. We've already seen the token name, which is what you actually attach to the token. Here we've got super secret. But there are some other settings as well. For example, the max age, you can set the lifetime of the authentication tokens. And depending on what you're doing, you might want to set that to a short amount of time or a very long amount of time. But of course, beware that having tokens around for a long time could be a security vulnerability. Now the setting below that, the Sesame one time setting, that tells Sesame whether or not to invalidate a token as soon as it's been used. By default, that's false, which means we can use a token as many times as we want. So if we go back to this page, and refresh, we can use the same token to access the page again. But if you wanted to restrict it to one use only, you can set this setting to true. So let's do that just now in our settings.py file. At the bottom here, we're gonna set the sesame one time variable to true. If we now go back to the page, when we try and access this URL again with the same token, we now get 403 forbidden. We can only use it once, and that's because we've set the sesame one time variable to true. And there are some other settings below that you can look into. I think the main ones are the top three here. So that's all for this video. We've learned about scoped tokens. We've learned how to send links to users, including users who don't have accounts in our database in order to authenticate them for particular pages on our websites. If you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to the channel. I'll be using Django Sesame occasionally in future videos when we develop proper projects. But for now, thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video.